Welcome, and congratulations on the movie. Uh, this is a big reunion, not just for the two of you, but pretty much the entire cast. Uh, that's kind of a nice feeling, uh, a labor of love, I think, for all of you. How did this come about? You want to you wanna tell the story? Well, I'll, I'll start <laughs> and then you jump in. All right. Uh, so I, um, we had done A Night for Dying Tigers in 2010, which, which premiered at TIFF, and uh, it was a, an ensemble drama. And after that, I, I really wanted to do sort of to follow one main character through the 90-minute journey. And, um, and uh, then I sent the script to... Lauren. First and only choice? Yeah, of course. Well, I had said to Terry, like, as soon as we finished shooting A Night for Dying Tigers, I was like, well, we have to work together again. We have to do something oh, else. Yes, that's first. And he was literally like five minutes later, it just so happens I have this script. Um, so I read it. I called him the same day. I said, we have to make this happen. Um, and then it was about two years, two yeah. years of, of us trying to sort of figure out how we could get this made, if, if we could find producers, how we could get money involved. Um, and that proved to be somewhat difficult. So this time last year, Terry and I sat down for coffee and said, you know what, let's just do this. Let's make it ourselves. We'll finance it ourselves. We'll do a little Indiegogo campaign and see if that gets us anywhere. And um, with a lot of, a lot of help from, from many, many people, a lot of donations, <laughs> a lot yeah. of people giving up their time and energy, we, um, we were able to make this film happen in 32 days. Wow, mm -hmm. amazing. And uh, Jennifer Beals, who gets an executive producing credit on this too. Yeah. Um, uh, you approached her too, and it was a, a, an instant kind of thing because you both worked with her as well. Yeah. No. She. She really. We all had a really great time making a Night for Nine Tigers, and and wanted to to do something uh, um, together in the future. So it was pretty much just you know call when it's ready. I mean, she's great, and, and we'll probably do another one, yeah. the, the three of us, in the near future. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, she's, she's wonderful. Both of them are wonderful. When you, when you get a good team together, you want to just keep, keep it going. You know, it's so rare that, that, um, that, that you can just sort of have that, that ease and the creativity, and everyone just it's, just, a, it's just a happy little family. And you get to make the movie that you want to make. But exactly. it's a difficult road to get there to make the indie film, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the fact that we're here at TIFF, it's, it's amazing. So what is it like when you get that call? Or I don't know, how, how did you find out that it will be presented at TIFF? And, and what did it feel like when you, when you found out? Well, it's, it's, <laughs> always, it's always amazing. But it's also a relief to know that the film has, has a chance at a life. You know, yeah. launching a festival like TIFF, it gives it a chance to, to, to get for a buyer or distributor to pick it up and to, to, to get people to see it. If it doesn't get into a, a festival like TIFF or a bigger film festival, then it's very difficult for a smaller independent film to get to get to find its audience. So it's just it's just Terry it's and I good. were we were pretty nervous the the days and weeks leading up to it, and I was out of the country, so. There's many uh, Viber phone calls, Skype phone calls going, what's going on? What's happening? Yeah. So when I did finally get the phone call. It looks good. It yeah, looks we good. got a few of those. Like, okay, it looks like it's going to happen, but we're not 100% sure. So it was, it was a good day when we found out. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the character that you play. Grace uh, is, when we meet Grace, she is... Um, well, she's she's a bit of a of a troubled young woman, I guess. When we first meet her, she um, she's just recently lost her father, whom she's been estranged with since she was a child, and um, Grace decides to put on a memorial retrospective, um, in a sense to to try to learn about her father and get to know about her father, and in doing so, throughout the process, watching the films, her life kind of starts to mimic her father's films and. Um, and she kind of starts this, this downward spiral, I guess, of exploration and, and trying to figure out who her father was and why he made the choices that he made in his life and what that means to her personally and how that's translated to her in, in her own day-to-day -day life with her husband. Um, so it's really, it's, it's, it's a journey that Grace has to go through. And, and I think, you know, ultimately at the end of the film she she comes out of it feeling um, like a weight has been lifted off of her shoulders. Well, first of all, Terry, thank you for writing uh, a strong character, a strong role for a woman. Yeah, right. Oh, of course. That's yeah. <laughs> my favorite uh, filmmakers, uh, Ingmar Bergman and Krzysztof Kieślowski, always have very strong central female protagonists, and that's 
kind of, you know, it's also I shoot my own films. I want to, when I'm doing a close up, I'd rather have it be <laughs> Lauren and Jennifer. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with, you know, a strong male lead. But. Uh, so, this movie, um, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the goal here with this film? Uh, you've got strong women in, in the movie, uh, but you know, I've heard everything. I've heard you call it a, a love letter to cinema, a movie for grown-ups. I've heard an art house film. So what was your goal? What did you want to bring across on the big screen here? Well, a movie for grown-ups is kind of, I mean, that that's, that sounds glib, but it, it's, I really wanted to sort of make a film that, that's, you know, in the old days we had things called DVDs and they would be on your shelves and uh, I wanted to make something that would kind of fit into a, a, a sort of an empty spot on that on my shelf and and I felt like this sort of exploration of cinema and how it might affect uh, 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 this Lauren Grace <laughs> affect her life was was missing and I really wanted to, to tell that story and have a lot of still moments where there's not a lot happening um, it's, it's almost it almost plays like a silent film in in certain sections. Mm -hmm, I think. It does, yeah. And yeah, and it was like that in the script too. Mm -hmm. so. um, and to achieve that, I mean, what kind of tricks of the trade were you using? The visual style is very important in this movie. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the films within the films each have their own sort of um, different look, and, and they're they're meant to be to play over a, a certain number of years, probably fifteen, twenty years. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a lot of fun. That was great treating the little vignettes differently, and and something it, making those crazy little um, snippets of <laughs> films was a lot it's of really fun. Really fun, yeah. Because I was able to just go nuts. I mean, you're seeing 45 seconds of what could be, who knows what that movie looks like when there's a, a man, a naked man coming up behind a woman in a bow and arrow shooting out it's her so bedroom random, window. You know, it's like I would love to see the other sides of that yeah. scene, but I would not want to make that movie. <laughs> it's way too complicated to, to make that to make that okay, to make that a good movie. Yeah. That would be very hard. Um, obviously this was a very gratifying experience for all of you. Um, uh, at the same time, it's tough shooting an indie film uh, mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons, because of the budget, because of the turnaround time and all of that. Do you have a best day on the set that you can think of, can remember? Our best day on set. You know, I know it sounds so cheesy, but honestly, like, we had such, such a wonderful group of people with us. Like, we, were, we had a pretty luxurious schedule, to be honest. We, we gave ourselves 32 days, was it? That sounds like a lot. I know. I, I always like, say it was but 23. But even but... with all the film within the film oh, stuff, yeah. too. Well, like... we, yeah, we would do some with, like, a two-person crew. We yeah. would do, like, a four-hour day. So there was many, you know, many times where, where it was just the five of us in this little apartment, which, which was Grace's apartment, and you know, it was just lovely because was, we, don't, we didn't have any trailers or cast rooms or anything. Everyone is just there all together all day, and, and you know, I think we only had two, two days that we shot over 10 hours, 12 hours, yeah, so it was, pretty, um, it was a pretty relaxed atmosphere, and um, it was just a lot of fun. Every day was a lot of fun. It was just like, hey, all right, here we are again, yeah. making a movie. Here we are. Yeah. Well, I hope you get to do it again all together. Yeah. Uh, thanks for this. Thank uh, it was you. Great talking to you guys. Can you tell me what you have coming up next? Anything in the works right now? Um, I'm waiting to hear about the next season of The Listener. It looks like we're going to do a season five. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And you? Um, trying to put together uh, another ensemble comedy, um, probably with the same group. <laughs> Collaborators. Hey, if it works, why fix it? Is that the yeah. saying? Something like that? Yeah, that works. <laughs> broke, don't if it's fix broke, it. don't yeah. fix it. Yeah. Thank if you. It ain't yes, broke. that's the one. If it ain't broke, don't fix if it. If it ain't broke, that's <laughs> even better. Uh, well, congratulations and have a have a great premiere. Thank you. Uh, enjoy Thank you. your stay here.